Those are some words from the civil rights icon himself as we remember Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s legacy on this federal holiday. Human rights activist and the late Dr. King's son, Martin Luther King III, joins me now alongside with his wife, Andrea Waters King, uh, to talk a little bit more about that legacy and how it carries through today. Uh, thank you so much, both of you, for being on. Martin, August 28, 2024 will mark 61 years since your father's unforgettable I Have a Dream speech. Now, you've said that hearing it has moved you to tears multiple times. What message do you hope people get from this speech? I hope that people get from the speech the message that freedom, justice, and equality can become real for all humankind. Uh, Dad and Mom focused on the eradication of the triple evils of poverty, racism, and violence. And clearly, uh, those evils are still very much with us. But when we work together, come together, become unified, uh, bring more civility, particularly into the political space that reverberates throughout the country, then maybe we can uh, one day finally realize the dream. Now, Andrea, you both lead the Drum Major Institute, which helps convene groups around urgent societal challenges in America. What are some of the biggest issues you're discussing in 2024? You know, it's, it's very interesting because Martin Luther King Jr. throughout his life talked about the eradication of the triple evils, which he coined as racism and bigotry and poverty and violence. And when you look at 2024, those three issues are still the um, foundational, um, we're at the foundational area of looking at to address those. We believe and know that it's through um, embracing peace justice and equity that we will once and for all um, as a society truly eradicate those triple evils. Uh, Martin, 2024 is a critical election year for America. What's at stake in your opinion and what do you think your father would be pushing for right now? So one of the issues at stake is whether or not we're going to uh, preserve, protect, and expand democracy, or whether we'll go in a different direction. Uh, I started off by saying we're at a political divide and we used to be able to disagree without being disagreeable. Uh, the fact of the matter is now we're in a complex kind of scenario. In, in fact, I'd say in the world, not just in the United States. And so what we've got to figure out is how do we bring people together? Who is going to lead our nation in a way that everyone is at the table, but we must move forward, not backward, not cut out history as we're trying to do in some communities, not reduce rights, but expand rights for everyone so every child can realize his or her dream or their dream. So, Andre, in your work, how are you trying to bring communities together, and why do you think that's so important right now? Well, you know, it's, it's interesting because I worked many years um, for Reverend C.T. Vivian, who was one of um, my husband's father's um, closest lieutenants. And one of the things that I learned throughout that work in organizing is the power of bringing diverse um, voices to the table. That truly is how we, we create the beloved community. One of the things that we are most excited about is that Today we're kicking off, today is actually the 95th birthday of Martin Luther King Jr. And we're kicking off a five-year campaign to really unite um, the, the country and unite communities through acts of service. And what we are, our goal is in the next five years to commit um, 100 million hours of service. This initiative we feel is going to um, touch at least 8 million youth. 200,000 um, students and we will, it really will give people um, an opportunity to be a part of the change that they want to see and consequently we really believe that it will help us to realize the dream. Well maybe remember his message today and every day. Mr. and Mrs. King, thank you both for coming on. Thank, thank you. you.